remember a friend in the playground telling me that if you could complete all of the levels and get all of the stars and go into the hole in Zora's domain and push this truck that was next to the SSM out of the way and you go to the Croft Manor, run round the swimming pool three times and the game took him to some sort of platforming level in outer space and when he got to the end of the level he freed Kano and got to become the snake from the background of Blanca's stage on Street Fighter 2. <laughs> So you did a really interesting GDC talk back in 2014 about discovery in, in games. When I started playing video games in the 1980s, everyone I knew played the same games. And when we weren't playing those games, we were talking about them. So when I was a kid in elementary school, we were obsessed with Street Fighter 2. It's literally all we talked about during recess. Games were just a lot more unknowable because there was no internet uh, and because marketing was a lot more limited. It was just something that they got for free and didn't know was important until they started losing it. All of the cool stuff about the game was secrets that you would discover in the process of playing it. When people do find them, it feels legendary because the chances are so small. It's actually really easy to just accidentally ruin the cool parts of your game if you're not careful not to. In the absence of that, all we had to show people was, look, you draw lines in these mazes, isn't that cool? I think we're starting to see more developers realize this is something that's worth fighting for. You know, I mean, lots of games have a little joke in them like that or something, right. but that game really did it. <laughs> I, I said at a certain point, I was like, I'm done talking about Spelunky. I'm gonna write this book. That's the last word. I don't wanna talk about roguelikes and what I think about roguelikes anymore. But, you know, this is such a cool project. I was like, you brought me out of the woodwork. <laughs>